right now you guys have data that kind of looks like the, you have the the Atwood machine M1 and M2 and you timed how long it took for the bigger of the two masses to fall a distance D. It didn't have to be the same distance every time, mind you. But if you did keep it the same distance, then you have probably the distance recorded someplace. And then you have M1, M2, and then say T1, T2, and T3. That should probably look like what your data chart looks like. That's your expectation. Is that what everybody's looks like? Excellent. Well, we're being asked to figure out the acceleration of gravity. And from an Atwood machine, the acceleration of gravity is within the relationship that you get from evaluating it using Newton's second law. This is what we get. This side, by the way, is the net force side, right? If you look closely at that, that's the weight of block two minus the weight of block one. That is the net force acting on the system. And this side is the MA side, where M1 plus M2 equals the mass of the system. So this relationship comes right out of Newton's second law. You would probably have solved it by looking at the forces here and compared the tension on either side. That's how you would have been expected to solve it on say, oh, I don't know, a test. So what this should tell you is that you're going to need to use this data here to figure out the acceleration. And then you can analyze the lab. So let's talk about that part first figuring out the accelerations. I would think that you would eventually probably make up a chart that has the average time. The average for each trial. Once you have that, you need to find the acceleration for each trial. And the acceleration is found by taking the two times the distance and dividing by the average time squared. <laughs> Excuse me. Now, if you don't know where that comes from, it's directly from delta x equals one half a t squared plus vi times t. If you started your system from rest, then the acceleration is just two times delta x over t squared. That's where we get it from. Now, this suggests that for every trial, you're going to need to calculate the acceleration. You don't need to graph anything to get the acceleration. All you need to do is plug in T average and D for each one of your trials to get each acceleration. Are there any questions about that part? This suggests that the only thing that determines what the acceleration's units will be will be that distance. We would like that in meters per second squared eventually. So this one probably should be in meters, not centimeters. On the other hand, with a little bit of elbow grease, you'll have M1, M2, and the acceleration now. And this will be your new data chart. Now this data chart can be used to figure out the acceleration of gravity. Now, what we're about to talk about is linearization of data. We've had this conversation before. You were supposed to create a section in your notes that had how to do linearization of data. If you remember creating it and know where it is, go find it in your notes. We're going to go back through it. If you have not created something for linearization of data, now would be the time. Something that you can reference all the time. I would probably put a little tab there and you'll have to linearize a set of data on your next test. So here we go. Linearization of data is an attempt to create a set of data 
that will be linear so that you can find the slope. There are several ways to do it. The way I'm gonna show you right now is one we've already done. To do this one requires that you have a relationship with your principal variable as part of that relationship. We have that, m2 minus m1 all times g equals m1 plus m2 all times a. This is our relationship. Now this process doesn't work for every relationship. In order for this to work, you must be able to create a fraction from your data using your relationship. So it doesn't work for every, po every possible example. But let me show you how you do this. You need to solve for your principal value. Our principal value is G. So step two, solve for your principal value. In this case, again, that's G. So when I do that, I'll get G equals M1 plus M2 times A over M2 minus M1. Any questions yet? I will point out this is a fraction that uses our data. Again, this only works for a situation where you have to get a fraction that represents your data. We did a lab we couldn't do this way. The Newton Second Law Lab didn't work this way. So we needed a different method. But this method works because when we solve for our principal value, we get a fraction. Everything on the top part of this fraction is gonna be on the vertical axis. And everything on the top, bottom part of this, ax this fraction will be on the horizontal axis. Which means you're gonna come up with a set of ordered pairs, a Y value and an X value. So this means creating the graphing data chart the one that's gonna contain your ordered pairs, the part that goes on the vertical axis, and the part that goes on the horizontal axis. What you'd have called your Y and X axis. The vertical side is gonna be everything on the top part of the fraction, M1 plus M2 times A. The horizontal side is everything that's on the bottom of the fraction, M2 minus M1. So, for each row of data, you're gonna do the work to create a data point. Now, I'm just trying to make sure I'm driving this home. If this were 50, and this were 20, and this were 1.5, then my data point would look like 50 plus 20 times 1.5 here. Well, this isn't gonna work because 20 minus 50 is negative. So it wouldn't have worked. I'm not paying close enough attention. So I'm just going to play as though what I actually said was 20 and 50. That way it will work. But you'll need to do this for every data point. Yep. Now again, this is gonna give you a set of data and this set of data should appear linear when graphed. So 
again, this is a process that should produce linear data. So step three is create a new data chart with linearized data. And that's this chart. Now, step four, think about units a little bit. Probably should be step one. But what unit should I have my distance in from the very beginning? Should be meters. If you look, it doesn't matter what your mass is. I want you to answer this question. What is the acceleration of gravity? 9.8 what? Meters per second squared. Is there grams or kilograms in it? No. It's because it cancels out. If we look, the top here has the mass and the bottom here has the mass. So whatever unit for mass you choose won't matter as long as all of them are the same. So make sure you keep them all grams or keep them all kilograms. The last thing you have to do is graph the data points and find the slope. But since I worry that you might not know exactly what I mean by that, because I've seen some of your labs and they're not always great, let me be very clear. Graphing the data points means a clear graph on graph paper would be best. I'll have some graph paper out on the desk. But I suspect you will have data points graphed, and I would circle them to show their data points. You're then supposed to hold up a ruler and put the best fit straight line through your data points. Now this part's incredibly important, and I know you need to leave, but you need to pick something on the line that is not a data point and use it to compute rise over run or your slope. Do not use a data point. Your slope should be 9.8 meters per second squared. All right.